Welcome, everybody, to the Ring the Bell pregame show presented by Seeky Guy. I'm Christy Francesco, and we are here. We're finally here. It's finally arrived. Opening day 2024, albeit 24 hours later than regularly scheduled, but nonetheless, it's finally here. Game one of 162, the long and treacherous journey uh, to the promised land, the destination of all destinations in Major League Baseball, which is the World Series, kicks off in about an hour and four minutes uh, from now against who else, right? The Atlanta freaking Braves. You know, the race for the National League East um, begins today, 3.05 Eastern, inside Citizens Bank Park. I'm sure it's going to be 45,000 strong. And I mean, it's going to be like a playoff atmosphere for this. Um, it's it, it doesn't get any better than this. Braves, Phillies, Zach Wheeler versus Spencer Strider. Um, powerhouse versus powerhouse. Ace versus ace. Um, and division rivals, man. This, this is what it's all uh, about. Uh, this is a day we've waited for since our season ended in a catastrophic way and catastrophic fashion uh, last October inside Citizens Bank Park. Um, now the Phillies get another chance to rewrite their story. Um, you know, f- you know, find, you know, find a way to get through 162 grueling games through the postseason to the World Series and hopefully ending with a parade down Broad Street. Um, if you're watching here on YouTube, please like subscribe and don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. Uh, we have over um, 2300 subscribers now. Uh, and we want to keep reaching every Phillies fan that we can across the globe. Uh, so thank you to all of you who's made this this show so powerful uh, in such a short amount of time. So we hope uh, that we can continue to grow this thing. If you're watching on Facebook, thank you. If you have questions before the game that you want to throw up here or comments, you know, leave that comment. It'll be right here. I'll read it on the show. Um, if you watched our 2004 uh, preview and prediction show last week, and thousands of you already have, then you know where we stand uh, in terms of where we believe this team can finish the season. Anywhere between 95 and 102 wins uh, and at least a World Series berth. Um, today, the Phillies and Braves square off in game one of the Major League Baseball season um, for these two teams. Um, Zach Wheeler, you know, toes that rubber against uh, Braves' ace Spencer Strider. Um, here is the Phillies lineups that we got sent to us about three hours ago, right around 11 a.m. this morning. Um, and you'll see it right here on that on that bottom ticker. Uh, I have the lineup uh, set right there. Um, here it is, uh, Kyle Schorber, uh, Trey Turner, uh, Bryce Harper, JT Real Muto, uh, Alec Bohm, Bryson Stott, Nick Castellanos, Brandon Marsh, and Johan Rojas. Um, no surprises there, really. Um that pretty much we knew going through by the time we got to the middle of spring training, we all kind of assumed that JT real Muto uh, was going to be, um, he was going to be probably in that four hole hitting behind uh, Bryce Harper. It was said so many times throughout, um, throughout spring training that uh, during the off season, JT worked a lot on his swing. Uh, the leg kick was, is basically almost gone. Um, so we'll see what, what what happens with this. So from an overall perspective on this, from an overall outlook on, on what to expect, you know, the Braves are still the Braves, right? Uh, many national pundits, um, even, you know, Phillies fans, unfortunately, even ones that are on this show, um, you know, they, they believe that the Atlanta Braves can win the World Series. The great thing about that is the Phillies do too. Um, you know, the Braves have been one of baseball's elite teams uh, since winning the 2021 World Series. They won 100 games in 22 and 104 games last year. And, you know, they're they're primed for another, you know, World Series run, a World Series title. But the Philadelphia Phillies ended each of their past two seasons with resounding beatings in the divisional series, um, you know, and j- both have just been unforgettable, just unforgettable. Um, look, the, the Phillies hope a strong showing, you know, in their season opening series against the Braves will get them off to a good start, um, which, which seems forever. 
has eluded the Phillies, you know, each of the past like two years. Like it's been, I, I feel like it's been a decade or so since the Phillies have had a really good April. Um, I, I'm, I'm probably wrong about that, but it just feels like April's always just gotten away um, from the Phillies. Um, uh, you know, a good start could propel uh, the Phillies into a race for the NL East, which Atlanta has won the past six years in a row. Um, look, regardless of who wins the division, it is easy to imagine uh, these teams playing again uh, in the postseason. Um, uh, yeah, sure. Um, if you have a way to get on, <laughs> sure, hop right on, as long as it's uh, nice and quiet where you are. Um, but, yeah, uh, th- that's where we are with this Phillies team. And, I, you know, we've heard it for the last, like, two weeks now leading up to this game that, you know, Phillies fans are almost – okay uh for lack of a better term they're okay uh knowing or with the realization that the braves are are uh, probably going to win the division i don't feel that uh i know players in the phillies don't feel that management ownership uh i i and there's many many national people that have been coming around a little bit you know the ben verlanders of the world um uh, a couple people I, I saw on the uh, MLB network and the names are kind of um, escaping me right now, but they're also on the boat of man, this, this, uh, this Phillies team are as a team to reckon with is a team that can absolutely battle for the NL East and potentially win that it starts with a good April. Like it starts getting off hot, starting things off on, on a good foot here. Um, you can't, expect to win divisions when you're having uh, you know bad aprils and and struggling mays um you, you can't always expect everything to just all of a sudden get great when the weather gets a lot you know significantly warmer the june july august um you know this is a team that needs a, a, a 145 games 150 games out of bryce harper this is a baseball team that absolutely needs trey turner to not become trey turner um, you know, August 4th. Uh, this is a, a team that, that needs a JT Romuto to maintain where he's been or even elevate um, his game, which, you know, I do believe is possible this season. Um, and I really think that the two big cogs here that can really elevate, um, that can really uh, elevate um, the Phillies forward is another huge growth seasons from uh, Alec Bohm and Bryson Stott. If Alec Bohm can again, go to that next level offensively, if Bryson Stott can elevate another level offensively, you're probably looking at, I'm trying to think. So I think overall the Phillies have a better starting lineup than the LA Dodgers. Call me crazy. If you look top to bottom um, healthy, 100% 100% right now on paper. I think the Phillies have a better lineup than the LA Dodgers. Um, and if uh, if this team can stay healthy and produce right off the bat, they're going to compete with the Atlanta Braves. They're not going to have the power numbers that the Braves do. I mean, the, the Braves have a, basically a one through nine who can hit 30 home runs, right? So, I mean, they, they set the major league record last year um, with home runs in a season. So they're, they're a big power team. Um, I do believe the Braves take a step back this year. I said that in the prediction show. I said that a month ago. I just feel like it, 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 th- this is the kind of year where the Braves are going to take a little bit of a step back. Am I talking about a 90-win team? No, absolutely not. You're still looking at 95 to 100 and 95 to 100 wins for the Braves again. However, I still believe that the Phillies can win between um, 95 and 100 games. I have them going 96 and 66 this season. Um, so yeah, that's 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 how I feel, um, and it, it's going to start today. It's going to start this weekend. You know, you know, Spencer Strider is in, an absolute machine um, against the Phillies in the regular season. Um, I want to pull up his stats here. Um, yeah, he's eight and zero against the Phillies in the regular season. Um, and he's 0-3 <laughs> with an ERA of over five in the postseason against the Phillies. So um, it, it starts today. And uh, I like the lineup that Topper is going with. Uh, I really I, I like Real Muto at that four spot. I, I do. I, 
I know a lot of people wanted Alec Bohm there, but after what I saw uh, during spring training, I just feel like uh, Real Muto for right now is a really good um, is really good in, in that role. Um, so regarding the pitching staff, I think the Phillies have an overall a better pitching staff than the Braves overall, top to bottom, um, especially the bullpen, um, and it's. It's going, you know, if you look anywhere around Major League Baseball in terms of preseason rankings, the Phillies, you know, starting pitching, uh, the Phillies bullpen is ranked in the top two or three in baseball. Um, I know it's odd when you think about that because when you're a Phillies fan and you watch 162 games like like I do and like some of us on this show do, it just doesn't seem like the Phillies have a dominant um, pitching staff or a dominant bullpen, but statistically they do. Um, and, and, who knows what's going to happen this year? I assume – I know it's going to be closer by committee or closer by situation. I do think by the end of the year, you know, I, I, I you think you would hope Jose Alvarado or Ryan Kirkering uh, assume that permanent role. But I, I just feel like Major League Baseball is moving in the direction of um, – uh, moving in the direction of – you know, closer by committee. What's the situation? What arm can I put in that role? Like, I think gone are the days of closers having 45 to 50 saves in a year. I think that's that's gone for, for now. Maybe one day it comes back. Everything always circles back, but it's not going to do it in 2024. So uh, you got you got um, Hoffman, who's going to get opportunities, Alvarado, uh, Kirkering once he gets back on, um, you know, hit, after a couple weeks uh, since he's seemingly had the flu for a month. Um, we're going to get him back in a few weeks off the IL. So that these are all things <laughs> that are so vital um, to the success of this baseball team. If you want to be considered a World Series contender, which the Phillies are by virtually everybody, um, then it has to start today. And I've always been a guy who's come on these shows for for so long that I've been doing podcasts and um, I know there's 162 games. Um, I understand, you know, teams can be bad the first two or three months and then make a run and get a wild card spot. Um, I think every game matters. If you have a bad April, it matters because now you gotta, you gotta, you gotta play. Um, I can't think of the word, the word is the, the, the term escapes me, but, you know, now you got to make up time. You got to make up wins, um, and you really got to you know bust your behind in July and August to to get the ground back in the ground back that you lost in April. And I think you know if you lose uh, a couple series in in April, then you have a losing month. You know, let's not re- forget. You know, the Phillies started twenty one and twenty nine a couple years ago, and they fired Joe Girardi, and it took and just an incredible run from Rob Thompson and his crew to just become a wild, just to get to 87 wins to get in and sneak into the playoffs. If that was the first year of the new wild card system, if that was any year before that, the Phillies missed the playoffs and we don't get that magical 2022 run that we got. So, you know, have a good April fight and bust your ass to have a great April, a really good May. I'm not saying be perfect. You know, I'm saying go above 500, go, you know, a few games over 500 and let's, let's, let's get that. Um, let's really build off the momentum and the positive, uh, uh, wins that you can get, uh, in April and May. And it can really carry you through if you hit a little bit of a slump, in July, in August, you know, but if you look back, well, they had a really strong May, uh, April and May. So things can look a little bit better. Um, so I kind of wanted to go over some, <laughs> this, some, this uh, something here over the last um, like 15 years or so of opening day starters for the Phillies. This is wild, by the way. Like I, I've been to a lot of these games where these were the starters. So I just wanted uh, to kind of go over this a little bit. Um, uh, by the way, I want to thank Seek Geek. Uh, for being day one sponsors. And as always, guys, if you go right now, SeatGeek.com, use our code on the bump for $20 off your very first ticket purchase. Uh, baseball is back. So if you want to get out to Citizens Bank Park, SeatGeek is the place to go. And if you use our code on the bump, O-N-T-H-E-B-U-M-P, uh, all one word, um, and you use that on SeatGeek, 
you know, for your first ticket purchase, you get $20 off. It's a pretty big deal. So um, I want to go through some of the names over the past 15 years or so. Um, let's start back from like 2005. So, you know what, 18 years ago, right? 19 years ago. Um, here are your opening day starters for the Phillies over the last 18, 19 years, right? So we'll start with 2005 and 2006. Um, John Lieber, for those who remember his glory years, um, we're with the Cubs, and then the Phillies got him, gave him a pretty good contract. Uh, he started um, uh, 2005 and 2006. The first game, uh, 05, they uh, they won, then 06, they they got blown away. Um, then you moved into 20, uh, 2007 through 2009. Um, of course, those are magical seasons. Uh, Brett Myers, who ended up being one of their main bullpen arms, started um, – 2007, 8, and nine's uh, opening day for the Phillies. Uh, 2010 through 2012 is the great, um, the Hall of Famer, uh, Roy Halladay. Um, and then you have 2013 was Cole Hamels. Um, then you had 2014, the lefty that we had gotten back in a trade by this point was Cliff Lee. Um, and then in 2015, uh, Hamels had his final uh, opening day start as a Philly. Um, that was an eight nothing loss. That was brutal. Uh, and then 2016 and 17, the great, the great former national Jeremy Hellickson uh, started <laughs> for the Phillies. Like this was during these were the years that were just awful, like the pre Harper years. I mean, a, a decade of just awful baseball. Um, and then that basically started to base where we are right now from 2018 through 2022 was Aaron Nola. And then, uh, I'm sorry, through 2023 was Aaron Nola, six consecutive, uh, opening day starts. And then here we are this year, uh, with Zach Wheeler. Um, just crazy hearing some of those names. And if you go even before that, like just hearing some of the names of who started, uh, opening day, Kevin Millwood. Uh, back-to-back ones, Robert Person, Omar Dahl in 2001, Andy Ashby in 2000. Um, just crazy to hear some of these names over the last you know 25 years who have been opening day starters for the Phillies. They've had some some bad, bad baseball teams. Um, just I remember Omar Dahl. I was at that game. Um, that was so terrible. Um, but, yeah, so this is l- – and from a sports perspective, my favorite day of the year is opening day. Um, I'm so happy that it was postponed from yesterday to today. It's a gorgeous day outside today. I think it's like mid fifties. The sun is, is just so bright. It's beautiful. Um, very much looking forward to, to seeing what it's like on TV, what, what citizens bank park is. Um, I do know, uh, I think Jason is there today. Um, you know, I guess, you know, the flu is not going to stop Jay from, <laughs> from going to, the opening day. I think it's like his 15th or 16th consecutive opening day, which is astounding, which is really awesome. Um, but yeah, so just want to come on here real quick uh, to do a quick pregame show. Um, I'm trying to see if I can find um, real quick for you uh, the Atlanta Braves starting lineup. Um, let's go to it right now. Do they have it posted? I don't see it yet. Um, I'm sure it is, but I really just don't feel like searching. Um, for it if, it if if it oh here it is okay uh so the starting lineup for the Atlanta Braves um is uh Ronnie Acuna Jr. Ozzy Albies Austin Riley Matt Olson Marcel Ozuna Michael Harris Sean Murphy Orlando Arcia Jared Kelnick stinks and then you know as we know Spencer Strider is on the mound so just a, just a devastating lineup it really is just reading those names off to you um but again uh the Phillies uh, for those of you who might be just joining, I just saw a nice little bump in who's joining us. I'm going to put the starting lineup on the bottom ticker here. Kyle Schwarber, Trey Turner, Bryce Harper, JT Real Muto, Alec Bohm, Bryson Stott, Nick Castellanos, Brandon Marsh, and uh, Johan Rojas getting the opening day start in center field, as we all expected he would. Um, and Zach Wheeler is on the mound. So 305 start. Uh, you can watch on NBC 10 in the local area. 94 WIP, as always, for the radio stream with Scott Fransky and Larry A. Um, we're finally here. Um, man, 162 games now. There's good, 
something to do almost every single night. Now that's the beauty of baseball is, you know, during those, these winters, man, during the weeks, they're going to just be just straggling along with nothing to watch, nothing to do. Um, but now it's baseball season. You have baseball every single day. Um, so it's going to, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's just a great feeling. Um, it's my favorite sports day of the year, favorite sport by far. This is what we do. So basically our season you know, here at ring the bell starts today. Um, we'll be here post game. Um, so getting asked a question, um, I think, I think you're, you're asking it backwards. Uh, yes. I, I think if it gets to a point where it's needed, Merrifield will pinch hit for Rojas without a doubt. I'm, I'm sure that's where it'll go. Um, so, uh, looking forward to this one. My prediction is I think Phillies win six to three. Um, I do think you see uh, two home runs. I think you see a Harper bomb, and I'm going to somehow throw this out there. I think you might even see one from Bryson Stott. So I'm going to say Stott and Harper, Homer, and the Phillies get a really big uh, 6-3 win. I'll be here post game for a few minutes to talk about what we just saw, and then we'll be back here Sunday uh, to wrap up, or Sunday night on Easter to wrap up um, the weekend series, the opening series against the Braves, and preview what's coming up next week. So, Again, at Ring the Bell 856 and all the socials. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, um, if you want, that's a good bet. Uh, that's a good bet. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure prop bets are going crazy uh, for this game, too, with two powerhouses like this. Um, eight, at uh, Ring the Bell 856 and all the socials. If you're watching on YouTube, smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and uh, don't forget to ring the bell for notifications on upcoming episodes and anything that we post on the channel. Um, I'm Christy Francesco. Uh, I hope you all have a great, great opening day. Enjoy the game. If you're at Citizens, uh, Citizens Bank Park, be loud. Be loud as you possibly can um, and enjoy it. Enjoy it. Opening day is beautiful. It's just a beautiful, beautiful time um, to be a sports fan and to be part of something like that. Um, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. And as always, go Phils.